the double boiler, see, is the key. With a double boiler, you can't overcook the eggs. I learned that working in a hotel in Brighton, England. Uh, what time is it, Norma? Uh, almost eight. Here we go, David, just the way you love them. Have some more coffee, please. Oh. What would you do without me? <laughs> It's your lucky week. The agency's got me booked here every morning. Mm. There. So, Brighton. I was Journal. just a... Journal. Oh, sure. Start with Barclays. I uh, know, it's a new one. A Aztec mining. Oh. As tech mining. Hmm. Ah. 10835. What's Aztec mines? It's gold. Mining and processing. Uh, it's just the dryer. Gold's good, huh? As long as the dollar is weak, it is, yes. <coughs> Barclays. Oh. Oh, I can never find this one. <laughs> Where are you, you little devil? Uh, ah, 335.92. Oh. I'll always find it in the air. Here she is. I overslept. <laughs> so peaceful here. Good morning. <clears throat> morning, David. Coffee. Oh, please. Uh, How did you sleep? Terribly. Sorry. Let's uh, sit out on the deck, all right? You haven't finished my eggs. The doctor said I'd got to fatten you up. You heard him. Now, come on. Uh, give me my cane, please, Norman. Thank you. Hold down his eggs to put wet seal on the decking. It hasn't been. And she forgot to put the bird feeder up again. Ah. Ah. Not much time left. You're playing. I should probably leave by 10. Oh, and 9.30, got an international flight. Um, David, this is, this is for you, from Ken. Where'd you get it? I found it in his dresser at home. Have you read it? No, it's sealed. You read it? I, I, I don't... I can't see, please. It's dated October 2nd, 2007. Nearly three years ago. Dear Dad, if you're reading this, something horrible has happened. And now I must talk about very difficult things. Last year, when you showed me your will, I was shocked 
to see that if I predeceased you, you'd made no provision for Caroline. I know you two have never gotten on, but she's been a fantastic wife to me. And a superlative mother to Lorenzo. You yourself have said so. Without your help, she now faces a bleak financial future. I'm asking you to leave Caroline what you would have left me. Do this one last thing for me, please. Much love, Kenny. Are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> a long haul. Yeah, well, come on, sit down. Oh. I can't believe you walked all the way down. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been down here a year. Yeah. Oh, a million dollar view. I was trying to figure out which house is the Spencer's. Did you uh, know that you weren't in my will? No. Ken never told me. Uh, did that surprise you? No. Kenny said that without my help, you'd have a bleak financial future. Is that true? I wish he'd never written that letter. So you don't need money, huh? It's your money. You have to do as you wish. <laughs> You're just as proud as him. I'd better finish packing. Oh, uh, is, is Kenny in line for a pension at the university? No. Was there a death benefit? No. Did he have a life insurance policy? Ken was 53 years old. He'd never had a sick day in his life. Getting hit by that motorcycle was a million to one thing. He never could have imagined a situation like this. Well, he did write that letter, didn't he? So what kind of savings do you have? I don't know. 20, maybe 30,000. That's all? And... No life insurance? The premiums are so expensive, we lived on, on so little. Well, that was your choice. Kenny could have done anything in this life. No, you're wrong. He couldn't. He couldn't have done anything other than what he did. You know, he quit painting once, cold turkey. Didn't pick up a brush or a pencil for almost six months. Got a real job with American Express. Where, Rome? Yes. 20-minute walk from our flat. When was that? Five years ago. <laughs> uh, he never told me. Ken considered it an experiment. 
Did he get fired? Or... He got promoted. They loved him. He was so good with people. Well, so what happened? He quit. He was miserable the whole time. Well, he could have painted uh, the weekends or at night. He could have. Oh, no, he couldn't. That's what you never understood. <sighs> Work possessed him. He lived inside it. He lived for it. Part time wasn't an option. Sounds like an addiction to me. Yeah, it would. Now listen, little girl. It is always money with you. And that's what you're here about, right? No. I told you I didn't know what was in that letter. So what are you going to do? I have my job at the gallery. Well, that's not going to cut it. You haven't been in the real workforce for 15 years. I'm asking, what are you going to do? I just lost my husband two months ago. I just lost my son. But your bills are going to keep coming in. Now, what are you going to do? Stop! Stop it! David? David? <laughs> I have to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, David. I can't imagine what it must be like to lose a child. Pretty rough. Well, Lorenzo and I'll be all right. We'll figure things out. Good. I'm just packing the car. Well, you go ahead. Uh, I'm coming right out. Goodbye, David. I hope... I'm leaving you everything. I don't want it. I'll miss my plane. 